Welcome to Secrets from the Saddle podcast. I'm Sylvie Daou, your host, fellow cyclist, bike club founder, cycling coach, bike race junkie, just truly super passionate about cycling. My journey with cycling started 20 years ago when I opened a spin studio, started a women's race team, and founded a women's only cycling club called Cycle Fit Chicks. I'm super thrilled to reveal all aspects that make the world of cycling operate. I'm so excited to be able to bring you interesting people from around the world, pro cyclists, recreational cyclists, coaches, event organizers, bike shop owners, everything and everyone you need to know or ever wondered about when it comes to cycling. I know you'll enjoy this episode. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Secrets from the Saddle, all things cycling podcast with your host Sylvie Dew. and this is a really cool episode and why is it so cool is because um, it just like worked out that um, I was being interviewed by Sarah, by <laughs> Farah Foster Manning, she had asked me to do an online interview or presentation for her women's triathlon group in the Toronto region. And it just so happened that she picked the day that I happened to be in Calgary with my sister. So what we did, I was like, okay, well, I don't want to miss out this opportunity. And how about we just pre-record it before I left? And so this is what this, um, episode is all about and then I was like oh my god this is such a good episode can I use it for the podcast because nobody's really kind of interviewed me per se and we had some really fun and engaging conversations and I thought that you know maybe you guys would really appreciate it so this is um the interview with Farah or I should say um this is Farah interviewing me and then what we did is that we did another episode with me interviewing Farah. So we got like a, a back to back. It's kind of cool. Um, and uh, yeah, I just didn't want to let any of this good content go because she asked me a lot of really cool questions. And uh, so I want you guys to uh have a listen and enjoy, maybe take some notes. Um, and I'd love to know what you thought. So if you could go to, or you can even watch this on YouTube, uh, and place your questions there. So enjoy the episode. Hi, welcome to the call. So we have Sylvie Dow from Ottawa region here. Uh, I'm so happy you made it on actually for the ladies here. Um, so let me give you a little brief introduction of who Sylvie is. So Sylvie is a cycling coach and mom of three. In 2005, she started a women's master race team till 2013. And she's actually founded one of the largest women's only cycling clubs, Cycle Fit Chicks. And it's located in Ottawa. And I've been watching Sylvie forever, 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 forever. In regards to this, um, Sylvie is also, uh, she is a podcaster. So I've been listening to you forever also. And these podcasts are surreal. Um, they're very down to earth for women who want to get into cycling, tips and tricks, a lot of people you interview. And it's just, like I said, it's really down to earth stuff. So that's why I wanted you here for the meeting tonight. Um, and thank you so much for coming out. <laughs> you are in Ottawa, but that's okay. And we're doing it this way. Um, we both have busy schedules, so this is how it's going. Well, thank you, Farah. I am so excited to be here to share and talk with you and the ladies. Again, yes, I'm sorry that I'm not here uh, in person but at the moment you'll be listening to this, I'll probably be somewhere in Calgary hiking into a cabin with my sister. So it just so happened that this is the date and I'm like, oh my God, but I didn't want to not be here. So that's why we're doing this video for you ladies exclusively. So I'm super excited. And I know that Farah has questions and um, I'd love to share my expertise with you. 
on yeah. any kind of cycling subject. Okay. So, so cycling is a big world of knowledge that gets accumulated over time. So like, like I said, I listened to your podcast and it's like every single one brings a nugget, like a golden nugget to me. Like, it's just something that I've never heard. And I've been doing this for a while. I've been biking for at least six, seven years now. And I feel like at this point right now, I'm actually, I'm like picking up tips and tricks now is awesome. Like, I think before I was kind of like, you know, okay, I just need to get out on my ride and do this. And why is my pace not picking up? And why am I cold? And why is my butt hurting? And, but I didn't know the answers, right? So I'm to the point where I've done a few races that with, I'm learning from the women at the races of why this stuff is occurring and how can we do to fix it? And what can we do to help with it? Like to prevent it basically. Mm -hmm. And I know you, you are avid, you are an avid cyclist. So you, you are doing races. You are doing short distance, long distance gravel. You're not into triathlon yet, but that's okay. We forgive you. It's okay. Until then, but I wanted to ask you a few questions um, for the ladies here tonight, because I feel like they're reoccurring questions that may come up, but um, you know, it's always good to hear from another perspective, especially from you. I'm very, very like excited that you were able to join me today because you do have a wealth of knowledge, um, especially when you're always with these, your women mm -hmm. biking and training and all that stuff. So Anyways, let me ask you first things first, um, we are heading into indoor cycling now within, I think we start in November. So we're hitting, we're, we're kind of trying to get outside here and there. Um, obviously I've watched your videos where you, you know, pertaining to the weather, you, you de-robe and you're like, okay, this is my base layer, bra, base layer, you know, different things you have your. I don't know what it is, buff and all this stuff. And I'm like, I literally watched the videos when I, before I hit outside. Cause I'm like, oh, okay, what should I wear? Like, do <laughs> I wear a winter coat yet? Do I wear a wind coat? Do I, it's always confusing even to me to this day, how to dress accordingly. Cause now it's Canada, right? Mm -hmm. It's always unpredictable. It's probably so hot right now, but in the morning it was freezing. So it's like, you kind of have what to do you do yeah. yeah so yeah. so what do you do currently let's say from we're in september to november up until our indoor cycling is there like clothing that you recommend like how do you dress right now well before i get into that i just want to let you know that i have done two triathlons <laughs> i know it was 25 years ago and they were sprints and they were just enough for me to realize that triathlons weren't for me. You didn't want to do it. Okay. <laughs> so you yeah, I, I did try it. I've done all the transition type like clinics of like, you know, how to transition from swim to bike to run um, and those things. So I, I get triathlon a hundred percent now with regards to right now. Um, and again, if, if I can come and help you live, I will do that too, because sometimes I could like, what I could do is I could just pull out all my gear and I can show you. Yeah. Um, but for just a quick, cause I don't want to keep you here all night talking. Cause I could talk. Um, so I'll give you an example. Like last Saturday, we went out for uh, a longer ride. And like you said, mornings are, are much cooler. We started at 830 in the morning. So here we had lots of fog, cold, you know, a little bit of frost. And so what do you do? So the first thing that I start doing at this time is start grabbing my gloves, different types of gloves. Like I have started accumulating like short fingers, which is what I ride all the time in the summer, but then longers, longer, like long, uh, long, long fingered gloves, then covers, which are usually like cross country ski gloves, then 
something a little bit heavier and then full on winter gloves <laughs> with yeah. with inserts right so the best thing that i can give you as advice is to start putting together i just call it a gear bin like i have an amazing um bike bag that's from cat four gear and they're actually toronto based mm -hmm. check them out it they have an amazing bike bin so i start accumulating like now putting together my winter type stuff and it oh. starts with gloves okay and then it goes to like buffs like uh pharaoh's mentioning have at least three of them three neck ears and you're like your head and for your ears and a spare because just in case you 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 lose one um arm warmers like if you have your arm warmers your sleeves um there's all different thicknesses you got light ones for the summer you got heavier ones um like more fleecy those are the ones you want to start grabbing um so i typically oh and undershirts an undershirt under your jersey to wick some of that sweat because if you start layering up at least like you could wear that during the summer um and it wicks it doesn't really overheat you because if you get a good undershirt like a good cycling undershirt like it's more of a mesh then it'll wick really well. So you won't overheat. Mm -hmm. So you have that. I have yeah. a question. Yeah. What do you feel about socks? Oh, Are socks. I hadn't got there yet. Okay. We're going there. <laughs> socks. Okay. Yeah. So booties. So get yourself a good pair. They don't have to, it doesn't have to be like heavy duty neoprene um, or Gore-Tex. Um, just something that is, will cut the wind. Yeah. It won't stop you from freezing if it's that cold. Um, if you can fit heavier socks in your shoes, like more merino wool or alpaca is the by far the best over wool um, because you don't want your feet to be too tight because they will freeze. They will get colder faster. But having a booty for sure for the fall because you know, like if you get wet, you get colder faster. It's more uncomfortable. You're talking um, like a slip over the shoe. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. Like a bike booty. Yeah. Um, so uh, obvious there's, you know, there's the neoprene ones, the Gore-Tex ones, the wind resistant ones that are a little bit thicker. Then you get into the Honestly, summer ones. I've seen people cut or not cut, but like oh, socks. Off, put a sock and cut the bottom out. Oh, that's a great same, idea. Same idea, right? Because the, yeah. Kind of, it's keeping a barrier, but it, yeah, I found this out even being like, you know, with winter boots, you can't have them so tight because the air doesn't get in to keep your feet warm. So that's a good point. Same, same idea, right? Like how you're talking about the thickness of the socks. You don't want them thick. You need some circulation still. Yeah. Right? So yeah. there it's, a, I think that's a great idea. I might even do that myself. <laughs> um, because honestly, who doesn't have a pair of socks that you don't like? Right. That you don't mind cutting into you don't want to do the twenty dollar ones <laughs> no. but but you know what i mean and yeah. um and that can be provide like a like you said a bit of a barrier it won't be waterproof so that's where the difference is right if you want something a little bit more uh, waterproof so what i do is i've got the undershirt the jersey and not necessarily a long jersey or maybe a long longer heavier jacket but say like a windbreaker kind of jacket, but you put the sleeves on underneath. Okay. So that you can remove the sleeves when you start overheating and, or remove the jacket, you still have the sleeves on. Um, so that there's kind of like you got options. Yeah. Um, so sometimes you go out in the morning with a hip heavier jacket, right? Then you get stuck in a little bit more of a the warmth of the day or even later on near noon depending how long you are then you have to take that off those yeah. are bigger you there where do you pack them yeah right? it's tricky yeah i feel yeah. like a lot of the times when it's cooler too i'll have the sleeve so you know, it's really weird with me and cycling that when i get i don't realize i'm getting overheated i'm just like kind of cozy but then but then i realize i'm overheated and as soon as i take off the sleeves i'm like 
relief. I can actually ride better. And then mm -hmm. I stick them in my back jacket there. Yeah. I have to stick my back, you know, the usually the jersey that we have, there, there's pockets too. So I'll take mm -hmm. the light jacket and put it, the pockets. Back. Or you just roll your sleeves down to here and you just keep them at your wrists. Yeah. But, you know, if you're like me, I'm 51, I'm going through menopause. You got the heat, the hot, like your hot, cold, hot, cold. So yeah. if you have something that's easy to pull on and pull off so right. that you don't have to stop, that's you want to avoid stopping as much as possible, like yeah. to get to the point where you can um, easily remove something like a, an easier piece of clothing. Now here, it's here's, ideal. A, here's a trick question for you. Now, do you feel that... We're talking girl stuff here. What yeah. do you feel about underwear versus no underwear? Oh, hands down, no underwear. Chamois bike shorts were built for no underwear. Um, I find like um, when somebody's complaining about sores, I that's the first thing I ask, are you wearing underwear? Because um if you just think underwears can equal to yeast infections and nobody wants a yeast infection, it, the extra cotton or nylon creates more heat and that can, that can cause yeast infections. It also, you've got more of the, the, the lining, which sitting on your, like, you know, your sits bones that can cause uh, boils all sorts of things well, the and then is, right yeah the crisis and it depends on the underwear but like <laughs> I could I think I used to wear underwear because I just didn't know mm -hmm. but I remember coming from even you know a 60k ride or something and yeah. just them off I kind of felt like because yeah you got the seams that are in sitting there. in the wrong spots like or which are on either side of your saddle so you want to eliminate any kind of discomfort um that is like one thing if you're having soreness from biking like from your saddle get rid of the underwear and then start assessing maybe it is your saddle maybe the saddle's too high maybe it's too low maybe it's too forward maybe it's too back so that then you're talking about bike fit that's going to help you there but number one never wear underwear oh, wow. um bike shorts have the cushion for that reason they're also cut out in certain spots for that reason um and you're gonna feel way more 100 more comfortable here's another thing make sure you get bike shorts that are tight not loose you don't want any like like them sliding like around cat yeah, yeah catching on your seat when you're sitting yeah. up and if they've they're old and they're starting to lose their elasticity Huh. time to get rid of them huh. the, to keep yeah keep them for the trainer in the winter yeah don't wear them in the summer <laughs> or don't just get rid of them if they're I, they're you know they're, sylvie i think when i first started too i bought like <laughs> a cheaper pair from mech like they're fine they're still good you can still get them mm -hmm. uh, but i noticed over a season of indoor training like first when i went outdoors i bought a new pair you know because yeah I, I got my second pair finally and I noticed even the density of the foam was squished down. Like it was used because yeah. you, it, it does get moist and you wash them and things like that. Right. Is it mm -hmm. even washing? Um, like I'm more of a naturalistic person. I feel like when you're talking sores and stuff, even like chemical laundry stuff, like you don't want added additives to, like fabrics and things, because if you do get sores and things that will only agitate, right? Oh, oh, here's another rule, ladies. Okay. If you're shaving or waxing or Brazilians or anything, try to avoid doing it right before a long ride. Okay. Cause, because all your pores are open, right? And if you're going to get pimples or saddle sores, this is the time it's going to happen. Mm. Like, so if you're going to do something like that, do it at the beginning of the week. Don't do a clean shave like Friday night and go out for a hundred, like a ride the next day. You are going to be in pain. I just like from lots of experience, sometimes I'm like, fuck, yeah, yeah I shaved last night. 
And that's why I'm in pain today. And I've got pimples like on either side of my crotch, just being, just being real. It's going to happen. You're going to be like, why? That's why. So while we're on this awesome topic now. (laughs) Ingrown hairs. Yeah, hair topic. Do you feel (laughs) that um, it's better to be clean shaved or have some hair? What do you feel? Oh, I don't know about the hair. I always shaving. So you're okay with shaving. It's been okay for you. Yeah. But so this was my thing. When I when I wrote across, what was it? When I did the Florida ride recently, I was testing, testing things because I'm like, I literally heard that you should have hair somewhat. Like, you know, not bush or anything like that. But like some, down your leg kind of hair? Like no, you haven't shaved hair. in like <laughs> crotch hair so crotch hair yeah you should have some kind of hair there just as a buffer against the chamois are you but talking in the front i'm talking in the front oh okay i have hair in the- <laughs> it's like i don't even know okay. the girls but i'm not like there's hair okay i there. thought you're a mole rat that's what i thought no no not okay. like all right so <laughs> we're talking mole rat versus hair not bush baby hair but like hair so i've never heard that but i've never gone like full i'm just talking the sides like your bikini line okay well i'm talking just bikini well, line i'm talking either totally gone or there so i've tested both because because <laughs> i like trying things right but i feel like so for the ride <laughs> across florida <laughs> i had some hair like you it was fine mm-hmm. it was okay it was neat it wasn't like totally bushified because I think that would have been too much of a buffer. Okay. So it was neat, but I've also done completely not there. And I feel like it wasn't terrible either. Um, because with me sitting, I'm not, a, I'm more sitting like more of my pelvic. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. When you're like in your, in yeah. your triathlon, so you're, you're that way I'm there yeah. I'm not on my butt. Right. So yeah. I'm always yeah. like kind of moving back and forth that way. So the hair, if I had hair, would pretty much be the touch point. So, right. Hey, that I've been fine, but I'm curious if you ever had that question amongst the ladies. Like, never. No, huh? Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. So, well, I can't, I can't give you the other side, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Because when you're, if if you're on your tri bike, yeah. you are your your pelvis is tilted back and you're leaning forward. So you're right. almost pivoting right on your pubic bone. That's right. And so no, I've never thought about that. Okay. I never well, tried that. that. But was a question, but hey, you know what? To each their own. Was that a, was that a question from somebody? Or is that like a personal no, question? I mean, that's just a generic I don't know. I thought everybody knew about this stuff. I've never thought about that part. Okay. <laughs> I might have to try it, but I, I yeah. kind of feel that if I was the growing part, the growing back of hair would be problematic, like okay. ingrown hair, things like that. So, so basically, I'm just, yeah, I'm just thinking You're- maybe a buffer would probably be a good idea. Buffer. And you just, you just do the bikini line. Let's work with a buffer. And if people are a mole rat, then Hey, let us <laughs> then know. They are. Then let us they, know they probably, they probably are that like that all the time. So they do yeah. keep up with the waxing or whatever it is. Yeah. I'm just curious if like, cause I know that causes in general, like bumps and stuff. So like, I've never had bumps there and moisture. So, you know, I don't know. I've had bad saddle sores that lasted like a month, oh. like the size of my thumb. I've so. had ingrown hairs that wouldn't come out. So I'm always like a teenager popping them. Yeah. Oh, and trying to get the hair out. And then when it does, it's this long. You're like, oh my God, no wonder. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. No, but that's, that was more with more training. And that's what happens because of the moisture, Mm -hmm. just the pressure. Right. But that's, that was intense training. And that's Mm -hmm. why I'm like, I don't know if you want to talk about chamois butter. Yeah. Um, But that is a great um it's a great well 
I think it's like, if you're going to try it, you'll probably really like it because it provides a little bit more, um, of a buffer slot. between you and slot. Yeah. yeah. Between you and the chamois. Um, I've tried the new one that I'm using now. It's from, um, it's called, um, Ath- performance athlete by muck off. Okay. <laughs> Funny. Yeah. It's, by, it's by muck off the product, the yeah. product line. But it's, I think, and they, it's called athlete performance chamois butter. So CC, um, for women, um, and it's got shea butter and it's got like, so it's got, it's more moisturizing and I was women, right? Yeah. So I was really surprised at it. It's very thick when you put it on and when you put it on, you apply, it's just like putting lotion on your hands. You put it on your crotch and it's, it's, But other chamois butters, I put them directly on the chamois. So it goes into the chamois. But this lasts much longer on yourself. And it provides a lot of, so there's no friction. So if you've been using underwear because you don't want to, because you think that that's going to protect you about the chamois, remove the underwear and try the the chamois butter. Yeah. yeah. Um love it. Uh I forgot to put it on like last Saturday. Yeah. I did the clean shave, forgot the chamois butter, so you know what exactly what happened. Yeah. Lots of pimples. You're being the experience yeah. for us. Oh good job. <laughs> down the side of my leg, but I was like, oh Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Um, yeah. so if you can um grab yourself to try some brands, some have the little sample samples. Um, but those are the, that's the one that I'm, I'm going to, so I'm going to show the ladies here. I, I have, you have some at home. I literally have a few from the States that have like, oh, what is that? Um, Mm. uh, what is that? I used to use hoo-ha rye glide and that's, that just sounds fun to use, but okay. It had peppermint. So your crotch is like peppermint. Yeah. It was awesome. But but when I started using the other one, yeah, it was clear that this one didn't last as long, ah. you know? And so I, I'm, when you go to the bathroom, you wipe it off. Like ah, okay. it just happens. Right. But the other yeah. one is because it's got the Shia butter, like all the, the, yeah. the, the, the ointment in it, uh, which was stayed on way longer. So the, so basically let's say we substitute underwear for chamois butter. That's our, that's we our, try that, yeah. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> So here, now that I, now we were talking like outdoor gear, let's lead into quickly, this is not quick, but let's lead into, now we do a lot of group rides and I feel that I group rode a lot with different pack races. So I do have the knowledge of certain things like how to, the etiquette, Mm -hmm. go into some etiquette when you group ride with the ladies. Um, cause I feel, I still get it to this day. Sometimes I have a fear that I might get too close to a wheel. Where should I position myself? Like there's drafting, there's that thing called drafting, but I feel like a lot of people may not be comfortable with it <laughs> depending, but that's the purpose of the group ride. Right. So you guys get there together at a certain mm-hmm. pace, um, together. So can you kind of go over what your group rides entail and have you come into any issues or, or questions about when the females start this? That's a very big conversation. (laughs) I, at my club, um, we have a mandatory four hour learn to group ride clinic that everybody has to take for us. I will, you know what? No, Farah, seriously, I will come down if you want in the spring and I will put you through. I will teach you how to do it. Okay. And I will coach your ladies because four hours I go through everything from signaling to proper breaking, uh, how to follow where your eyes should be, how to eat, how to drink. A uh, double echelon, single echelon, um, rotation. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot to talk about. Like you can't just 
talk about one thing, but what I can say is that, um, for etiquette is, um, and I'm sure you probably do signaling Mm -hmm. like stop, you know, stop, Um, you know, passing, slowing, uh, pointing out, you know, debris, whatnot. Um, so that, that's good etiquette. Um, one thing that I will, um, have everybody think about next time is when you're following depends. I mean, it takes a long time for you to feel comfortable to follow somebody really, really closely. You also have to trust the person you're following Mm -hmm. and you've always get that gut feeling that you don't want to be close to someone. It's a real gut feeling. Don't be close to that person. Um, Make sure that your wheel is behind this side or that side. This is cross wheeling. Okay, when you start overlapping closely Mm -hmm. to the person in front of you, this is where accidents happen. Okay, when you're by like, this is fine, because if I turn, or this person turns, they're not going to impact or, or touch my wheel, because there's enough space. This is very dangerous. Okay, so um, giving yourself enough space to break feather your brakes um uh is a uh, good practice so that's that's just like one small thing Can i ask you what i learned in the florida ride was where to put my eyes so i mm-hmm. don't so i don't i'm not looking down at the wheel just like i don't want to cr- you know how close am i where am i at mm-hmm. so where should your eyes be so you're not like kind of exactly you know, that's an, that's another one. They should be the hips between hips and shoulder, right? It's great to see because you're also very um, worried about hitting the wheel that you're focused in on the wheel. And you know what? Everything you focus on, you're going to hit probably um, it, depending on how close you are. So keeping your eyes up and always at the front, like looking forward, because if somebody signals at the front that there's a pothole, it's got to come down the line. And if you're not paying attention because you're staring at the the ground or the, the wheel, then you're probably going to hit the pothole or hit uh, the wheel or, or miss it or, you know, if they swerve. Um, so it's always eyes up, right? eyes up, hips, hips and above. So you see what's going on in front of you, yeah. right? Your yeah. peripheral always in front. Okay. No, that's, yeah. I, that's one thing I learned recently, weirdly. And, uh, no, I, I practice it. I do. Cause, cause before I was kind of, you know, when you get so much on your plate, when you're looking here, there, if you're not trusting the person in front of you pointing out, you know, the rocks or this and that it's, it's all about trust too, right? Like mm-hmm. huge when you group ride, you really, yeah. really have to trust that the person leading is doing the proper things and it comes down the line to you so that you know you keep up with the pack but yet it's all safe right yeah exactly okay so that okay we will get into that a whole nother time i hope to have you back literally in the spring that would be that would be great for us i would drive down and give you that clinic okay we'll talk about that we will (laughs) Uh i think it's really important i'm sure like you know and and i do get like people come into our club or it's like, yeah, I've got it. I go, yeah, I think you probably think that you got it, Mm -hmm. but it's, it's, it's important because then everybody has the same terminology, you know, knows what to do and knows the etiquette of group riding proper rotation, where you fit in things to look for. Um, It's great. Somebody who's been riding for lots a long time has a certain amount of experience but do they have everything to make you safe mm-hmm. when you go out group riding with everybody else exactly exactly you know yeah that's huge it's huge yeah. you have to have that confidence right mm-hmm. it's not just about you on the road it's everybody else so okay now okay so that is that is current riding up until now now we're heading into november here comes the indoor group rides ladies so now what do you suggest? Okay. So we typically ride from eight 30 to 10 30 Saturday mornings. 
Um, it is more of, I think they're more of hit workouts. Um, mm. cause that's what training does, right? That's what it gets you prepared for riding outside in the spring again. Mm. So my question is, what do you recommend for like during that, those two hours, hour and a half or whatever, what do you recommend for, let's start with nutrition. Oh, okay. So you're talking oh, about it. Well, unless we want to jump into what we should be wearing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're inside. You yeah. sports bra on your 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 bike shorts, right? Like nobody's watching, um, unless you're on Zoom with friends. Um, but you know, anything you'd wear outside, you wear inside. Um, and then nutrition. So make sure you've had your breakfast. Um, it's a two hour ride or two and a half. It's like uh, um, hour and a half to two hours. Yeah. Yeah. So so sometimes. Like for that amount of time, um, you know, a snack or two, I always recommend that you, because you're inside, you probably have a table beside you, have a little bowl of snacks that you can easily access. Make sure you have your water with some sort of electrolyte, um, have breakfast. The nice thing about training inside is you can still drink your coffee while you're training. But we're actually, okay, let's look. Oh, oh, are you talking about outside? No, no, we're actually in a group hall, like in a hall. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have. Oh, like, well, when I thought you said spinning, like, okay, so spinning. So, um, yeah, so I guess you can't bring your coffee with you. We're all together. I don't think any of us have ever worn our bras to class because there is men there. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> okay well okay so I all right can, i can't at home no big deal like i could wear almost nothing. all right well then just wear your kit whatever a t-shirt yeah. um so a little background i used to have a spinning studio for five years uh eight years um and that's where i started all of this from 2001 to 2009 so it's like pre facebook um pre zoom pre everything um and uh, yeah, so we used to have our group rides on the, on inside. Um, so what do you bring? You got your, your kit. So you have your pockets. So, you know, a snack or two in the back pocket, you're always going to come hopefully to your training ride, already eaten breakfast. You've already done your coffee. Um, you got electrolytes in your bottle, a bandana to catch sweat um yeah so and one of the things that i i used to until covid teach inside and then that all changed right so now i've actually i have a winter uh 20 week winter training program and um and it's a lot of fun because i get to coach people from all over because we're on zoom and for me indoor in the winter is about going back to basics and learning skills. So if you've ever done any skill development outside on the road, like outside in the summer, you can, you can work on a certain set of skills outside that you can't maybe do facilitate on the, like inside in the winter. So, and then there's uh, skills you can work inside in the winter that you can't work outside because you know you reduce the elements you know wind like you're on a stationary bike so you can really focus on your heart rate your watts um things of that nature right. um so what i developed about 16 years ago and i did it inside then i took it online is a skills development night so once a week we would start with you know working doing an FTP test or a map test to, you know, get our base, like figure out where we're starting at and then working on pedal stroke efficiency, how to properly climb hills, uh, uh, quick pedal stroke, uh, quick recovery. So there's all these things that you can focus on and build and build and build every year when you go back training inside. And of course it's going to, continue it's, you're still going to be um riding and working out there's also intervals and drills that go along with these okay. but it's the skills yeah like you know getting faster at working at 90 rpm um that's tough you know, 
it is tough, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm a heavy hitter. I'm a grinder. Uh, so, I love you. I, Big ring rider. That's me. Um, you don't switch out yeah. hills. It drives my coaches. It drives everybody crazy that I'm literally. It drive me crazy. Out. It's like, why are you working more when you could be working less? But been, so the thing is, I've been so used to it since the start of time. <laughs> that for me to spin, I'm like, heart attack. Like, you know. Well, if you could keep a 90 RPM and go up your hill in a big ring. Yeah. I mean, you're strong, right? But the thing is that you don't want it. You want to be able to not be taxed, like have your legs full of lactic acid by the time you get to the top. So you can continue on with like the speed that you left at the bottom. Um, So a lot of that, like I coach outside. So it's hard. It's harder because I have to follow people and people are faster. It's hard to. What mm-hmm. days do you do this? What days do you do your program? So Thursday nights, right after supper for an hour is skills. So we just practice skills. I'm like a broken record. So like quick pedal stroke, dropping your heels. Um, we work through the quadrants in the pedal stroke. We apply that to hills. We apply it to endurance flats. We do them we do ladders for cadence drills so a lot of that stuff is on thursday and then saturday is our group ride so a lot of um my clients they come they have different um or my participants they have different goals so some of us come in with just wanting to keep our legs for the spring. Some of us want to build up to hundred K over the winter so that they are ready to do like a century, um, in the spring. Um, or they just want to do from 60 to 80 to hundred, whatever. So yeah. group rides, group ride. And the nice thing about Swift, because we use Swift is that we're all tethered together. So I could be working hundred percent harder than the next person but we're still stay together. Right. And that's what the nice thing is, is that, um, everybody's doing their own thing, but we're all together, like in a group ride. Um, and, um, there's different types of rides on Swift. So it's nice so that you can, and we're on, we're on a Facebook chat room yeah, so that we can see each other and we can see each other in Swift. Um, and then people do whatever if they're doing. Our rides are usually like we start out with like an hour and a half, then we go up to two hours and two and a half hours. And then it starts with distance, mm-hmm. you know, like, well, no, it's like if you're going to do a hundred K, then it's like you're looking at four to five hours. Yeah. See, I, okay? think, I think with like your program and just even with the club, like just being together, you know, heck we were all hit hard with COVID and being alone so many of us were mm-hmm. trying to still be motivated for just breathing every day so it was yeah. like now we're coming back to what it should be and like just the like you're saying group rides like it's so important to get together you know yeah. whether it's virtual or outdoors or whatever right mm-hmm. so it's like, I think the more the merrier like you're going to have your skill set. You're going to have your ideas of how to advance people. And I'm always listening to others. This is where I'm advancing because like, it's not, it wasn't, it's not just about me anymore. It's about, okay, so if you're succeeding, how are you doing it? I'm open. This is what makes you, you want, you have to be coachable to this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Be coachable to understanding why you don't wear underwear, be coachable to understanding why see for me I was just saying this earlier I'll have a half a teaspoon of salt before I ride or go do a workout be coachable and ask me why like because it's helping I'm advancing for reasons and that's what we want to do right Mm -hmm. we we do this for fun but yeah we want to be the best version of us yeah so in the winter it's good to get a variety going back to basics working skills working your endurance base building and speed so Tuesday nights Um, I pick like a workout from Swift because I know that Thursday nights, if I'm doing intervals that I'm um, executing with people that you might not necessarily be working that hard. Mm -hmm. I know this. I'm a spin instructor. I can see. And but if you're on a facilitated um, workout from Swift that actually applies the resistance 
then, you know, I know that you have to work to whatever, you know, whatever is getting being given to you on your bike, like, because it's, because it's swift and you're on a smart trainer, if you're supposed to be going like 180 Watts, it'll give you 180 Watts on your bike, yeah. right? You don't yeah. have to produce 180 Watts. Right. So for that, you get a better workout, a very more specific. And there's sometimes, you know, you could do super hard workouts in 30 minutes. And that's what I love, yeah. you know? So don't ever think that you have to be on your bike for hours and hours doing like yeah. hill or like, intervals like i mean they're definitely longer ones but yeah. when you're starting it's uh to work up to that time so and that was, that was what i was gonna say because when i was training for ram i just had a regular trainer um, oh god i didn't i was so basic oh my goodness i literally got my i bike. think i would have gone mad too my bike <laughs> literally wasn't even fit to me because it couldn't happen because everything was closed nobody was touching people at that time oh yeah. So I never had a bike fit before going into the race. I had a basic trainer. I was just estimating a lot of stuff. Right. And then when I got my, my smart trainer, holy cow, night and day, like it actually made me work. And I'm like, cause like you said, if you're pushing like 200 Watts, it's going to make you push 200 Watts. Yeah. I didn't even know what 200 Watts were. And maybe, maybe a lot of people don't even know what Watts are, but when you feel it, you're like, Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. okay. So the nice thing about um, the program is that you're, you're showing up for other people. It's just like the spin class, right? Um, you're showing up, it's scheduled. You got the motivation in front of you. Um, we set goals together and, um, and we always start like with four hours a week. So sometimes it takes a while for people to fit this into their schedule, you know, and, and make it happen. Yeah. But, you know, maybe it's a week or two or three that you need to like move things around. Um, okay. Like have the family kind of on board as to what you're doing. Um, but once you get there and you're like, okay, I'm working, I'm cycling four hours a week. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday mornings for two hours. And that's all you have to do. And you can be okay with it and yeah. not feeling guilty that you have to be doing six, 10, 12 hours like everybody else. But if you're doing triathlon, granted, you have two other sports that you yeah. have to add to that, right? Yeah. Like, so it gets, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's attainable. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just have mm -hmm. to scheduling we were talking scheduling Schedule, mm -hmm. scheduling is huge right yeah I, thinking, I don't watch tv so instead of not watching tv i do the half hour hour doing something else right mm -hmm. running biking swimming that's fine that's how i can fit everything in because i have to eliminate something to bring something in or you but, could just become a cyclist and just ride oh, i'm just kidding I'm, I'm just that personality that i have <laughs> <laughs> I want to do skydiving. I want to do boxing. I want to do karate. I want to do it all, but like, I don't have that much. Time. So <laughs> so I only, like, I just become a cyclist. So when you it. become a cyclist, you just literally drop the amount of training you have to I do just, by 33, you're not helping these ladies 66%. Here. Sorry. I'm sorry, but these I hate ladies, to tell you're you not helping anybody 66%. here. She didn't say that guys. She's just, <laughs> she's kidding. She's kidding. Well, so I tried triathlon. I didn't, it wasn't for me. Then I moved to adventure racing, which is just as um, demanding as triathlon, but with a couple extra sports. So it's like uh, trail running, mountain biking, paddling in there. you got ropes or whatever else that they require. I did that for six years. And then I said, mm. you know, I, I couldn't, I didn't have enough bandwidth to get it all done and do be well at it. And, yeah, yeah. and the traveling. And I was just like, I'm just going to do riding, just yeah, going to ride my bike. Yeah, and then you're like, Oh my God, I got so much time left. You know, it's funny. I hate to bring this up because it's kind of truthful, but women versus men in sport, men, I feel have a little bit more flexibility than we do. Because we're always the nurturers and the caterers and all that stuff. And we have more, I feel like we have a little bit more on our plate usually. 
being mothers, women, whatever, because then you throw in the whole career and housework and family. So I feel like that was a thing with a lot of, that was a question. How do you get it all in? Right. Because mm-hmm. like, well, yeah. and I see like, you know, whoever mm-hmm. <laughs> doesn't have all these additional added bonuses, they mm-hmm. can just, you know, ride for six hours. And they're like, Oh, I guess I'll have a shower and maybe eat. You know, it's one of those things. It's like, okay, not everybody, people have full lives, you know? Yeah. So, you know, with me eliminating, I had to eliminate TV. I had to eliminate, I don't know, like TV was the biggest thing for me anyways. But was there something you had to eliminate that so you can bring in, because cycling takes the most time out of the three sports. So, um, well, I can say that being a good communicator with your family and your partner is number one. So remember, it's not just about us. Um, If you have a partner, they should have equal amount of opportunity to do what they want and you support their initiatives as much as you expect them to support yours. And I can't tell you how many people um, I've been in so many women's triathlon cycling groups that this dynamic does not exist because one person decided that they were going to be everything like, uh, I, I just started getting on my bike and I'm going to do an Ironman yeah. that's 20 hours. And you're expecting your partner to cover for you. Yeah. I don't think you would appreciate it as much as they did. So it's sometimes you have to just be a cyclist, yeah. um, maybe, or just be a runner or just be a swimmer. Um, but the thing is, or just do sprints, just right. do Olympic distance, like something that's totally a chain attainable for the type of training you need to put into it. Um, because, uh, so like when I'll just talk about my situation is that, um, my husband, when we started is always like, I ride on Saturdays. Okay. He golfs on Wednesdays. So if I have something that's on Wednesdays, it's my problem. That's his night. It's not his problem, right? Like I have to either bring the kids with me, get a babysitter, not do it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And yeah. so if you have your stuff scheduled in, so everybody knows what's going on and then, you know, you, you're doing this, the kids thing too. And a lot of times I will double up things like my, my son plays football. So I'm like, okay, well, my husband's a coach for him. I'm like, well, I will ride my bike to the football game and I'll be there on time. So I get my ride and then I'm free afterwards. Like I don't ride home. Like, that's just crazy. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what I mean? So, um, yeah. so it's like, where can you fit it in? Yeah. Where can you, and on Tuesday nights, he'll drop me somewhere and I'll ride to their, his practice right. or I'll ride at ride to the gym, then go to his practice. Yeah. And so I'm out with the family, but I'm, you know, I'm not Fitting waste, in. wasting That's time true. watching. Yeah. It's, it's like those sports that you think that you need to be there watching your kid Yeah, where you should be doing something else. Yeah. Like I used to be a gymnastics mom, mm. three hour practice. I'd watch parents watch that. Sad. please go do something. Sad. There's a gym yeah. in the building, go for a walk, go do groceries, go do something for yourself. Yeah. You shouldn't be watching your kid. I'm going to say that, but coaches don't want you watching their kids. No. <laughs> so, but, but this is how like, you know, fitting it in like early morning swims. Okay. So somebody has got to do take care of breakfast. Unless you're going to get it in and be back for breakfast. Yeah. You know, um, so that makes sense. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think that time management with us women, Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the biggest thing with anything. So it's, Mm -hmm. we want to be, be healthy and we want this. We want, I feel like a lot of us found this. It's, it's a love of ours and we like getting together. So it's kind of like, just have to schedule properly. And like you said, great communicate. Um, mm-hmm. be considerate obviously be considerate to the other people that are around you mm-hmm. into what you want to do mm-hmm. 
And uh, now because being a single parent is not the golden ticket to mm-hmm. having your own time. I hate to say it. I've been a single parent too. So yeah. um, you get one week to do your stuff. Then yeah. you've got your kids and that's where your attention should be. Yeah. Um, so putting the time into making it work yeah. because listen, we've got many, many, many years. Yeah. You can yeah. do something now and, and just do something every like set up a couple of goals for the summer. Um, you know, uh, corporate your kids train when they train, yeah. you know, like, train, um, train when they sleep, you know, different things. Train when they sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When their kids, my kids are older now, yeah. so, yeah. um, they've got their own thing. Yeah. Um, so now it's like, how can I fit my stuff in when they're doing their stuff? Yeah. Um, and, uh, and you know what? Your kids appreciate it. They you will. don't need to be They'll watching them a hundred percent. Like, you know, I know we all want to be that mom where like their kids succeeds. Like my mom watched me all the time. Forget it. It's our turn. No. It's our turn. <laughs> right? like, it's our turn. To it's shine. like my mom was doing her stuff. She was there for me whenever I yeah. needed it. And that's, yeah. that's it. Right. Yeah. Um, and don't ever feel guilty about that. And then you take, yeah. you know, yeah, that's a big thing. Don't it because if you what do they say? If if mama's not happy in the house, nobody's happy. You I, I don't know how they say it, but you know what I mean? If if you're happy not, wife, happy life. Happy wife, something happy life, something like well, no, <laughs> I don't know. But it's it's something like, you know, you have to take care of yourself to take care of others. Right. Like, you know, put that oxygen mask on first in the airplane, slip it on other people because you can't survive. You won't survive. <laughs> And that's my thing. It took years of me to snap into place. Like, whoa, I'm exhausted. I'm, I'm exhausted. I need to figure mm-hmm. out how not to be and mm-hmm. to have something come together for me. You know, it's also, I find as a mom, it's important to um, show our kids be the role model, mm-hmm. but also being encouraging for our kids and our partners, you know, um, so, yeah. so everybody's getting the benefit of being healthy, not just one person. Cause I think, I think that's a selfish thing. It's it just, you know, like I'm going to get healthy. When you open your eyes well, up, you know, like it just it why? Comes together, right? You have mm-hmm. to fit it in, but you have to be aware too. Right. Yeah. So, okay. We should wrap this up. All you right. Are, you are a wealth of knowledge. <laughs> so you will be back. You will be back. Um, I can't. I would love to come back. I'm just apologize again for um, it. Just I was like, oh, I'd love to. Then she's then fair is like, well, it's Friday. I was like, like this Friday. Yes, yes. this is the best. This is how this is how we have to work. See how we're fitting it in. And I'm like, okay, well, I I can't make it in live, but what about if we did a little video? So I hope this video helped you. Um, I'm so open if you, Farrah, can um, provide my contacts. If you have uh, questions, you can message me on Facebook. That's probably about the best place and say, hey, I was on Farrah's, um, uh, I was was part of the group and I have a couple questions or maybe you want to know more about the winter program. because uh it's so awesome please everybody <laughs> I, i'm like talking they're here they're here yeah um, please upload her podcast like please it's so good it's so good please don't stop that anytime soon oh i won't i just I was just talking about coffee and caffeine <laughs> okay. my my last oh, gosh, one. look at us we don't need it we're good we're high on life <laughs> yeah i'm like yeah i drink it but i don't really get anything from yeah, it like, but it's good i don't care about it <laughs> You know your body's at a good state when you're like, meh, all these stimulants, meh, they're not really stimulating it. Oh, give me a p- sweet potato. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I need way harder stuff at this point. Yeah. But anyways, well, thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. And um these ladies here that aren't here will be in contact with you because um even for like you said, spring training, that'll be that'd be awesome. That'd be yeah. Awesome. yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Have an amazing weekend. Wish I was there. Thank you so much for spending this time with me on the Secrets from the Saddle podcast. 
learning more about sighting people, places, and things that make cycling such an exciting sport. I am so glad you stopped by today. Please leave me a review if you feel so moved to do so. I would love to hear your feedback. And if you could take one second to share this episode with someone you think would enjoy it, I would be forever grateful. Also, if you could please leave me a review, if you feel so moved, by going to iTunes and leaving me an honest thought and an honest comment, telling me what you think, and most importantly, tell me what you'd like to hear more of. It would really help me to bring more great, inspiring cycling stories to you. Until then, have an amazing day. Make sure you ride your bike. And don't forget to visit my YouTube channel if you'd like to see the full version of this podcast live.